You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. That man in the house that enslaved people built, he uh, tweets out both the alleged whistleblower and Nancy Pelosi. He retweeted a post that outed by name the whistleblower who first filed the complaint about his phone call with the Ukrainian president. The tweet he promoted from the Trump War Room account said it's pretty simple. The CIS whistleblower is not a whistleblower. The clip embedded in the tweet produced by the white right-wing Washington Examiner includes the name of the whistleblower, which is supposed to be off-limits, which main stream news sources have refused to publish in the interest of protecting federal recognized whistleblower safeguards against retaliation. But people in the president's inner circle, um, including Ivanka and Pat Cipollone, warn him not to promote content re renaming the whistleblower. It's just wrong. But panel, what do you all think? I mean, we have been caught in this imbroglio now for a couple of weeks. Nancy Pelosi is not turning over uh, the um, indictment, which may or may not be good strategy. But meanwhile, the madness continues. I mean, literally, the madness continues. Julia, what are you thinking? I don't think it's a good idea to, to blow the whistleblower like that. I mean, because at the end of the day, you don't know what type of retaliation can come towards that, that whistleblower being being exposed. It's just like when you have a witness in protective custody, you want to make sure that witness is protected at all times. So I don't agree with what the president did by doing it, but you know, at the end of the day, the president is an individual, he's an adult, he's entitled to whatever he wants to say or do. So, I mean, if people in his own circle will give him fair warning of, hey, that might not be the best approach, and he still makes, a, makes it up in his mind that he wants to do that, then hey, you know, you just, it is what it is. You know, I don't agree with it. I don't. I don't think it's the right thing to do, because it puts a person's life at stake. You mm -hmm. know, by by having a president of the United States do that, I think you now you you become public enemy number one with the entire world as far as those who support the president, things of that nature. So you don't. It's like you. It's like you literally got to just. I mean, fall off the earth just to go to for hide and protect, just just to ensure protection because now you put a lot of stress on people to protect this individual. Just, but now you just are, ousted. you've led a Republican group in Southern Maryland. Yes, uh, Republicans seem to have drank a whole lot of Kool-Aid around this president. Where are you on this whole issue of impeachment and the contempt of Congress? Does it shake you from your Republican roots or are you still loyal to Trump no matter what? I don't like a lot of things that's going on. I mean, I don't... I look at it like this. If Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats had any faith in the candidates running for the Democratic primary, we wouldn't have an impeachment hearing. They would focus on putting together whoever candidate that they're going to support and vote the president out of office. <clears throat> but I understand the whole purpose behind the impeachment, you know, to tarnish the pre president's legacy and to put doubt in the voters' mind for 2020. So now she's holding the articles of impeachment because she wants to ensure a fair and reasonable trial that's going to be conducted by the, by the Senate. So I understand her approach, but I think it may backfire on her for the simple fact you don't have the numbers in the Senate. So at the end of the day, she can hold those articles as long as she wants to, but at some point you're going to have to turn it over to the Senate and then trust that the Senate is going to do what's fair and reasonable by the people, for the people, and just see it through. At the end of the day, if you, if you don't have the numbers, you don't really have the but, control. But do I, you I, think that do you think that there is a case for impeachment? No, I don't. Well, we'll see, and, and, Erica, and, and I take, uh, and I here. take point to what you just the latter part of what you just said. Again, I, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Segregating re-election from impeachment. So impeachment was justified. He made a phone call to the president of Ukraine on July 25th. And which he, in that which phone he admitted call, to. Well, he had no choice what, but now, to admit Julian, to it saying? because... What are you saying? No, I'm saying he, he admitted to the phone call. Right, he and had he, no But he said but it was to. perfect, and many look at that phone call and say there was implicit quid pro quo. 
that there was um, implicit bribery, that there was a heavy-handed approach to the president of Ukraine. So he says it's perfect. A whole lot of other people, including people he appointed, don't see it the same way. Right. And so you have to segregate both of those things. So this re-election campaign is not about 2020. It is about holding a person that was um, supposedly duly elected to be president into account. And so if it is said that the president can make a phone call whereby he stands in front of $400 million that was appropriated by Congress for military aid and for security for the country of Ukraine, who has been attacked, right? And who has who been, has been occupied and has been our ally and said that they want a democracy. And so they went through the process of having a democracy and they elected President Zelensky as their president. So he stands in front of the $400 million and said, listen, though this has been appropriated by Congress and also obligated, those were federal funds that were obligated, meaning that they were legally bound funds. He steps in front of those funds and says, you can have those funds if you'll do me a favor, though. You, he cannot do that. And so it is important well, for the little bit of to, Erica, democracy. You know. well, 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 you know, for a, a segment of the population, it would appear so. But he can't. He has to be checked. And so and that's for anybody that's in office that is president. And so the way that he was checked was by impeachment. And this is something that, though, there were members of the House of Representatives that long ago said that he should have been impeached. Nancy Pelosi said that, listen, Donald Trump is going to impeach himself. And he did that on July 25th with that phone call to President Mm -hmm. Zelensky. So this is nothing to do with personality. This is nothing to do with re-election. It is to do with, if you were president, if I were president, that we are held into account for acts of high crimes and misdemeanor. And he did commit that on July 25th, loud and clear, with not only himself, but with at least a dozen other people on that phone call. And the person that did say that rose and said that this was an inappropriate phone call is the person who has, and I believe that this would have happened um, at any time because that is the type of person that we're dealing with, whose now name on December the 3rd was tweeted out by not only the mm. Washington Examiner, but then by those allies of Donald John Trump. So in order for us to move forward in what we are still saying is a democracy, there has to be a level of checks and balances. And unfortunately for him, that is impeachment. Okay, Erica, I want to get Julian back in here because I'm sure he has plenty to say. (laughs) Uh, But you know what? Before you jump in there, because I know what you got to say, um, pretty much. I mean, (laughs) you like a ride-or-die Republican. And... uh, (laughs) If you keep riding, you might be dying. Uh, <laughs> just saying. But in any case, uh, Erica has laid out a very strong case for why so many people, not only Democrats, but increasingly some Republicans, are looking askance at what's going on. What can you say? You're a Republican. You're Like I said, you're a ride-or-die Republican. But I know you know that some of this spit is wrong. I said spit. I don't curse on the air. Um, (laughs) So, (laughs) just saying. So, help us figure out why you are still so ride or die. I have a choice. I'm a registered voter. It's no different than... And you think this is what's going on is right? No, I don't. But... I, I, I I don't think this impeachment is right. I think it's a sham. I think it's trying to tarnish the president's legacy and putting doubts in the voters' mind for 2020. You don't think what happened in Ukraine was wrong? Who said it was illegal? Let's start there. Oh, the, the, the high crimes and misdemeanors. You, you had two, de- you had two Democrats who said this was a waste of time. The Constitution. You had, you had two, two out of how many? Come Democrats. on, dude. Two yeah, out of how had, many? You had two Democrats. So when Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats... When Nancy Pelosi put together this impeachment inquiry to impeach the president... She was at the point of no return. She had no other choice than to keep going forward with this. But we you just talked it, about this is not about personality. This is about I never holding said a person about, that I, was elected into office I never said it was about personality. So how is it a sham? this was about but how is it a somebody's sham? legacy. How is it a sham? Listen, okay. he did that all on his own. Okay. How is it tarnishing a legacy when he, made a, when he made a phone call that should have been a congratulatory phone call? On the phone call... He decided he said, that he was going up? to say that instead of you getting the $400 million that was appropriated by Congress, I need for you 
to look into something for me. And it is okay. about a Joseph Biden, and it is about a Hunter Biden. You tell okay. me how is that a shame. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, as the marijuana momentum continues, our folks at uh, MarijuanaStock.org have already reached more than half of their funding goal for the hemp CBD investment. So if you want to take advantage, you better get in now. Of course, hemp is a cousin to marijuana with a much higher concentration of CBD, which means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana, but it won't get you high. Scott is sad. Now, folks, if you don't know, <laughs> hemp farming is now legal in the U.S., creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. It's an investment opportunity for you and the full folks at 420 Real Estate. It's a simple business model. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants, people like Chris. They are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. Now, all you got to do is invest as little as 200 bucks. Monique, you got that. In the crowdfunding campaign, up to $10,000. Amisha, some of that Sinclair money. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.